The founder of the subreddit uh, site Wall Street Bets has launched a blockchain powered app featuring what are called exchange traded portfolios. It's his next step in attempting to upend the financial system as we know it. Uh, and join us now, Jamie Rogozinski, founder of the now, it says infamous, Jamie, I'm going to call it the famous <laughs> subreddit uh, forum Wall Street Bets. Jamie, you, you tweeted out you were going to be on, and I appreciate that because I, I want all these people, all these followers, I want them, I want them all uh, watching Squawk Box, but can you ask them to be kind? Would you, would you, would you mind? Uh, I do not, I, I can only speak for myself, but I don't want to wear a jacket. And so I am not a suit. Can you, so can we make that clear right from the start? As you can see, I'm not also wearing a suit, but uh, absolutely. And look, I think the idea is to get a lot of people in the crypto world to, to watch CNBC, right? This type of uh, uh, product that we're launching is the merging of ETPs and blockchains with uh, traditional Wall Street. It's fascinating. I got to tell you, I spent some, some time on it, and I was going to actually quote you on that, the amalgamation of blockchain uh, with the financial market. So the way I understand it, and, and we've seen that, that uh, a lot of people didn't want to be bogalized or didn't want just typical uh, ETFs. And this is a way to, to really do a decentralized ETF where the community decides on the makeup of the uh, exchange traded portfolio using blockchain and tokens and smart contracts which allow them is it necessary to get away from the the Wall Street dominance over exchange traded investments so that you can do your own because you, you, you got to push back on the man again Jamie is that the whole idea well, look, I mean, it's not necessarily to get away. It's to try and improve the system. Uh, we, we know the benefits of blockchain. We've seen it over the years, the transparency, the security of it, the uh, democratization of it, and what we're doing here. And we've also seen the merging of the blockchain with regular uh, Wall Street. You have Bitcoin futures trading on the CDOE. You have Coinbase going uh, public, which makes it a nice symbolic gesture. Uh, you're starting to have synthetic stocks on the blockchain. And so what we're, we're getting ahead of the curve with this uh, taking this, the, the power of community to be able to come together to vote on a regular basis much more uh, in a much more nimble manner, much faster to rebalance these ETPs or ETFs and uh, and put them on the blockchain and combining uh, asset classes from both the crypto world, like like crypto coins, like uh, you know, Dogecoin, I guess, if you wanted to put it in there, you could put Bitcoin, you could put Ethereum, uh, as well as regular stocks or even ETFs. And so pretty much the the range of possibilities is is uh, unimaginable. And so we're really excited to be able to get ahead of this and, uh, and, and to really further empower the people and further democratize finance. Jamie, you uh, you created something, I mean, obviously. And and uh, if can you comment on this? It, did, are you no longer on Reddit because you tried to, to, they decided they didn't want people monetizing what was going on. Is this your way of monetizing this incredible space that you've basically created? And, and God bless you if it is. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but are you going to make money on this? Is, is this your baby that will, will be a big money maker for you personally? Uh, I hope everyone makes money with this. I definitely am going to make money with this, and uh, and everybody that gets involved is able to make money with this, but also everybody else that gets involved with this is also able to be empowered with this. Uh, what happened with Reddit is yet to go public. Uh, there's a lot of rumors out there. I'm unfortunately unable to address them because I sold those rights to a movie studio, so you'll be able to see them on the big screen uh, once that movie is out. And uh, the idea of, of what I did with Wall Street Bets community, as well as what I'm doing with this, uh, WSB DAP is uh, to continue to push the envelope, to continue to empower the individuals, to comp continue to empower the retail, the small guys that are able to to participate and have a voice in the market the way that they haven't been able to do previously. Did you watch closely the the recent hearings on on what legislators or regulators must must uh, might decide to do? Were you? Uh, gratified? Were you fearful? Do you think that, that they understand and, and are behind you on this to, to have a, a soft touch? I truly do believe in the regulators uh, ability to try and, and, and fortify and to strengthen a system to identify the weakness. They have a really tough job ahead of them. 
But what they're looking to do is to make sure that things are fair, that things are functioning properly. So I'm not at all worried about what they're going to do. Uh, I'm hoping that they're able to catch up with technology fast enough so that they can continue to, to empower and protect uh, just the entire integrity of the stock market. So I, I, I do believe that we've saw, we saw it with Bitcoin. We saw them. Uh, it was a little late to the game, but they're able to regulate and control a little bit. The sooner you, uh, the closer you get your money to a, a bank account, the more involved the, the regulators are to make sure that there's no fraud and things of that nature. I believe that is uh, instills trust in people, and I think that's a really good thing. So I did watch the the congressional hearings, and I thought that it, they were very productive. And I'm hoping that they're able to go out there and make some changes. But I'm also hoping that this type of technology does it from the private sector as well. Right, the moment that you have competition and challenges the status quo and challenges the way things work. For example, the T plus two settlement date, this is the issue behind the, the Robin Hood um, debacle where they had to stop trading GameStop. That sort of thing doesn't happen on the blockchain. The blockchain has instant settlements and, 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 and it's transparent and verified. Uh, and, and hopefully as we introduce this and companies decide to, to start leveraging this blockchain technology, it'll force Wall Street to, to become competitive, much like Robin Hood forced other brokers to become free as far as commissions are concerned. Jamie, just uh, in a macro sense, with with a, a, you describe a new era for for retail investors and all the things that go along with it now, and, and YOLO, and and uh, you know, I made a lot of money. Whoa, I lost! Look how much money I lost! And it's all I don't know whether it's gamified, but you must admit things have been going pretty well overall with the market. And so, and, and some people have still lost great sums uh, on some of these on some of these bets. What if things really did turn south? We couldn't turn away, like in the financial crisis, we turned away a whole generation of investors from Wall Street and from investing. Well, couldn't that happen I mean, again you, with, with a frivolous sort of approach to all this, or, or it, is it really ushering in a new democratization? Look, you didn't turn down an entire generation you created this entire generation right it's because of what happened in the, the financial crisis that bitcoin was born a lot of the language around there was uh, revolved around this idea of centralized power centralized money and government etc cetera, etc cetera. and you also have this this new demographic of market participants these younger millennials or generation z that are taking the market from their own perspective and look it's a zero-sum game it's always been a zero-sum game people will lose and make money warren buffett loses money uh the idea is that now you or the individuals are able to take control and lose their own money as far as what's going to happen if the market goes up or down or whatever they don't care bubbles as far as i'm concerned is a boomer term like if the market starts going down <laughs> kids go from buying calls to buying puts they just need to know which direction to bet the market in and that's and that's something they can do through this, uh, the Wall Street Bets um, DAP that they can see on WallStreetBets.net, and they're able to vote and they're able to rebalance these things on a very regular basis, much faster than regular ETPs, in a really transparent manner. A boomer term. I, I resemble that remark, uh, <laughs> Jamie. I, I sue you for, for definition of character. They did, did you? I think that some of the things that you mentioned, Warren Buffett. Uh, that, that he said and, and maybe Charlie said about gamification. I, I think that got overplayed uh, in the media, and I'm not sure. But what, what did you think about some of those comments? Was, those were, I don't even think, those guys aren't boomers. I think they're the uh, greatest look, generation. I, I, <laughs> they're really good, and they can coexist. That's the thing is there's really no threat to any participants. You have the fundamental investors like Warren Buffett. They can go in there and they can do their market valuation and their, you know, uh, all, all the discounted cash flows, whatever it is that they do to try and find a good investment. You have HFTs. These are high-frequency computers that do their thing, and they're just trading really quickly. You have technical traders that are looking at charts or whatever. And now you have this, these guys that are like meme stock traders, and they've proven that they can actually turn it into a profitable strategy, and they can all coexist and use the market it in their own way so that they can make money as aggressively or as risky as they want to do. Jamie, I, I CNBC, this is the beginning of a beautiful relationship with you. <laughs> and and the, my hard questions were just, just uh, you know, as, as devil's advocate, because you had to shut down some stuff that, I mean, it gets so nasty on Twitter and on Reddit, I, I, and it's just not right uh, what we see. So, you know, I'm afraid to check my Twitter feed after, uh, I'm not a suit. Okay, did I mention that earlier? <laughs> did, did I mention that? Did. Well, bring all your people <laughs> to us. Uh, I think Andrew's got a, uh, a comment. Yeah, uh, to Jamie, the, Jamie, the yeah. one, the, the question I have, and maybe then I'm going to sound like a, a boomer myself with this, 
is, oh, no. <laughs> even, even when you look at the GameStop scenario or any of those types of things, typically what's happening is even when it appears on the outside that the Wall Street Bets community, if you will, is quote unquote moving the market, what seems to be really happening if you're looking at the flows is you have the professional class, the suits, if you will, that are riding on top of or trying to anticipate or trying to leverage or frankly take advantage of some of the folks that are on these platforms because the, the suits can move faster. And so I, I just was sort of wonder how you think about that. I recognize the idea of the coexisting, but I also recognize that somebody's gonna win and somebody's gonna lose and somebody's gonna take advantage of somebody over somebody else. And it's unclear to me uh, whether both can actually win at the same time. Look, they, they most certainly can both win at the same time because it's a game of cat and mouse. And I think it's good that the the, the larger institutional um, participants want to try and front run and try to figure out a way to do it. But it's going to be a game of cat and mouse. Here you have millions upon millions of risk-hungry individuals that are looking for inefficiencies in the system. They try to exploit those inefficiencies in the system. We saw what happened with GameStop. They certainly, I'm talking about the, the millennial generation, the, the, the meme traders, a lot of them certainly did make money, and we know for a fact that some hedge funds made money. What we saw shortly after is some of the hedge funds decide that instead of trying to beat them, to try to join them and make money too. What's going to happen next is these guys are going to find a new exploitation, a new weakness, and they're going to jump on it and try to profit. And then, sure, let the other guys go in there as well. And that's the beauty of a free market. Every time that happens, it becomes stronger. And then every time they find these inefficiencies, they reduce them. This is what happens with arbitrage opportunities. All these things are really good for any healthy functioning market. All right. So boomers and millennials, can, can we coexist? Jamie, is there, someone just Absolutely. wrote in there. They, really? And they said, uh, talking to me, by the way, we don't bite. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all hail. Well, we're, we're all here hail, Jamie. They, they, they say, yeah, they, you're very far. All right. Uh, great having you on. Uh, nice meeting you. Thanks Bye. for having me on. You're welcome. Likewise. Okay. We'll see you. Bye. Bye-bye.